Shalom. Our verse for today is Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Make this a joy for them to do and not a grief. You yourselves would be the losers. The verse comes in the last chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. In his final recommendation to his audience, the author emphasizes the importance of leaders in the faith community. The word for leaders, which is hegumenos, a participle from the verb hegeomai, is used three times in verses 7, 17, and 24. In the first instance in verse 7, the author invites his audience to remember their leaders who teach them the word of God, to reflect on the outcome of their lives, and imitate their faith. In verse 24, he sends his words of greetings to the leaders of the people to whom he was writing the letter. The essential point in these two verses is the invitation to pay attention to our leaders in the faith community and never to ignore them, nor to ignore their relevance in our growth of faith. While these two verses demand that we recognize our leaders, verse 17 enjoins us to obey them. The verse gives us a simple reason for which we ought to obey our leaders. They keep watch over our souls and they will give an account. That is to say, the souls of Christians are entrusted to the care of their leaders. This reminds us of Jesus' dialogue with Peter in John 21, 15-18. Jesus asked Peter up to three times if he loved him, and Peter affirmed. And after the affirmation, Jesus commanded him to feed and take care of his sheep and lambs. The duty of church leaders is not just to feed the lambs that is preaching the word of God to them. Leaders also have the responsibility of nurturing the faith of the children of God. Of what use is our preaching to the people of God if the word springs up and immediately dies without bearing fruit? For the word of God to bear fruit, however, the church leader, after planting, has to water it, weed the grass, manure the plant, trim the wild branches, etc. In the end, he can say with the Lord about the vineyard, What more could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? Isaiah 5.3 In the end, if the faithful refuse to bear fruit, it is no longer the fault of the pastor. The Christian will have to give an account of how he or she wasted all the opportunities given them by the pastor. Taking care of souls is not an easy task. To make it a joyous task, however, the souls have to collaborate with the pastor through obedience. Any act of disobedience is to the detriment of the soul in question. As we read, you yourselves will be the losers. So many people want to disobey the pastor because his lifestyle is not what they desire. Remember, you will not use the weakness of the pastor as an excuse for your disobedience before God. Jesus tells us in Matthew 23 verse 2 and 3, the scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. You must therefore do and observe what they tell you, but do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. For your own good, therefore, listen to your pastors, especially when they teach you the will of God. When they teach you something that is contrary to the will of God, however, respond to them as Peter did before the Sanhedrin in Acts 4.19. You must judge whether in God's eyes it is right to listen to you and not to God. Therefore, the final word is this, ensure to do God's will only. If the pastor teaches you God's will, listen to him. If he deviates from God's will, he is not fit to be called a pastor. Let us pray. Lord, give us good pastors and make us obey them for our own good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.